Hello everyone and welcome to a special video today not talking about Wotiv which my channel is known for but talking about something that I truly love which is Final Fantasy 7. Final Fantasy 7 is one of those games that is almost a landmark in terms of video game history and I think that's fair to say a number of people consider this to even be their favorite game of all time and that speaks to how powerful it is, but today's video is really about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the second game in the remake trilogy being released now by Square Enix, and specifically the ending of Rebirth, which seems to be more than a little bit controversial. Now, I'm not claiming to be an expert on FF7, there are a ton of details that I get confused sometimes, but for the most part, this video will contain some spoilers for the original Final Fantasy VII, as well as Rebirth. So if you are not interested in that, please tap out now. I won't feel bad. Thank you so much for the click. But anyway, let's start with the original Final Fantasy VII, a game that at its time came out on the PlayStation 1 and was considered to be absolutely groundbreaking, both for 3D technology that the game was pushing on this brand new PlayStation as well. Not only that, but in terms of storytelling too, Final Fantasy VII is usually regarded as a game that really pushed what video games were doing in terms of story, in terms of cinematics, even so much that it was marketed as a game that, well, was like a cinematic movie. And that's pretty amazing. Even to this day, many people, and especially in the Final Fantasy community, if you're going to bring up Final Fantasy and villains, it comes up a lot about Sephiroth and Aerith, two characters that have long outlived the initial re release of their actual game. Final Fantasy VII, and especially certain scenes, are pretty amazing for the time when you... if well, for the first time you were playing it back then. And I think that speaks to just the original bait and switch of Final Fantasy VII. The, of course, the idea that originally you're part of a group called Avalanche that is essentially fighting a evil organization Shinra, which is destroying the planet. Of course, not too far in, you find out that actually the true villain, the real danger to the world, is Sephiroth, legendary soldier, who your party basically chases for the rest of the game. With one of the other most memorable moments possibly ever in video games being Aerith's death, a event that has stuck with many gamers for many years. And heck, I don't really need to say too terribly much more about it. If you played the original FF7, if you love the game, even if you just, you know, enjoyed the game, that scene if you didn't know it was coming, was pretty shocking when it did happen. Because back then, killing off a major character, it happened, but a major love interest and in a character that seemed essentially central to the plot was very shocking for the time. And if you play a piece of music like this to certain gamers, well, probably brings up some emotions too, speaking to the strength of the original FF7. The original FF7 and Aerith's death lives on even to this day, so much so that back when FF7 had come out and the internet was still young, there were, I don't even know, countless legends and rumors and myths about potentially being able to revive Aerith through methods that seem kind of insane, <laughs> but in turn, the years, in the early years where video game secrets were a plenty and the internet wasn't capable of doing as much as it is today, there were a ton of ideas about how you could potentially go and bring Aerith back, which, surprise, surprise, sort of mods or cheat devices there was no way to bring Aerith back from the dead. It was said by the development team that Aerith was always intended to die, with 
in the respect of a changing development cycle that was, for all intents and purposes, cut short so that the game could come out in a decent time frame. Yeah. Aerith was always meant to die, and to that, it sticks with a lot of gamers and yours video maker as well to this day. This music does conjure up some really sad emotions for me because I truly loved Aerith. She was a fantastic character and her dying was impactful to say the least for a piece of media when I was young. And to that point, it brings up the original theme of Final Fantasy VII, which is life and death. Hironobu Sakaguchi, the uh, father of Final Fantasy, was going through some stuff at the time of developing different Final Fantasies and always wanted to explore the idea of life and death, which eventually became the life stream, the idea of people dying, but still living on in our hearts, the people who continue. And from that, basically the life, idea of the life stream was born, and it was an absolutely great idea. And to that point, if we are taking a look at the remakes, we have to talk just a little bit about that. The idea that FS, the original FF7 was about life and death and kind of the shock of that. The original and all of its kind of shock value is lost to time. It is lost to that initial playthrough. And trust me, I know, you can never recapture that first playthrough, or your first playthrough of Final Fantasy, of going in and knowing essentially nothing, and playing through the game, and seeing the events transpire. That is something that is effectively a one-time thing, no matter how much any of us would love to forget it and relive it, it is simply possible. And to that point, me, to me, anyway, to wrap up this part about final, the original Final Fantasy VII, I think that the original FF7 is the coveted lightning in a bottle when we talk about releasing media. The idea of a piece of media that comes out at the right time, with the right technology, with the right challenges, with the right directors, to be something truly amazing and memorable. And that's Final Fantasy VII to me. It is lightning in a bottle. And if something about the remakes has uh, become apparent to me, it's the idea that that original feel of that game is something that I and many people can never, ever recapture. So, with all of that out of the way, let's go back and talk about Final Fantasy VII. And I'm going to put on the FF7 Rebirth trailer, the uh, release date announced trailer, because this is one of the last trailers I watched before I went media blackout. And at some point in the future, yes, I would absolutely love to do a full video talking about everything. I'm going to start a playthrough of hard mode Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and go through it with a very fine tooth comb. But... Uh, Rebirth and Remake. Remake as well is something worth talking about just because of the idea of how they approach that and its relevance in regards to talking about Rebirth. Remake holds no punches with the idea of who necessarily the main villain is, at least in terms of the audience. To most people in, or most of the characters, they really don't learn about Sephiroth being that important until later on that he is as big of a threat to the world as uh, we know effectively he is. But very early on in Remake, you are greeted to Sephiroth, something that didn't happen in the original, but honestly, if it was to play out the exact same as the original, it would only be for nostalgia of, hey, this is exactly how it happened before and it's just happening again. Remake does try, at least or from my original impressions of it, to try and do something new with the material and potentially not only that, but expand and improve upon it. Thankfully, something that is exacted upon that idea in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. 
So that's great news, but Remake doesn't pull any punches with that, and in terms of Rebirth, Rebirth becomes a much clearer thing, but also doesn't necessarily hide away from some of the things that it wants to talk about, which is, of course, Aerith's death. Aerith's death is the penultimate ending of Rebirth, and probably the correct place where the second game should end. If we're looking at in general story form of a trilogy, normally the first one is, you know, the initial setup and some strength and levity at the end of it. A very encouraging future, thinking of even the Star Wars Episode 4 and the way that works, whereas Episode 5 usually is the darker one of the trilogy, leading into some more serious nature. And then last but not least, we come into the grand conclusion, which has yet to be finished. And of course, with Final Fantasy VII Remake Project, the final game is going to have a lot to, well, just a lot on its shoulders, I should say. Essentially mean that everything that has been presented so far, the payoff to all of that comes effectively at the end. And a lot of the questions that are still being, you know, pondered on because there is dev time between now and the end of the last game's release and being finished is all up in the air and we won't know until later. So, of course, they're putting some stuff in that we can't think about. But I'm getting distracted again. Rebirth. End. Aerith dies. There's no two ways about it. Aerith just dies in it. And for some people who think, well, what about this or this? And, and that, of course, needs to be seen into the third game. But the way I read it is effectively this. Cloud's mental state throughout the entire game is really, how do you say, not good. To the point where he cannot even necessarily uh, be relied upon to be sane most of the time. And towards the end of the game, it gets even worse which is concerning, of course, for Cloud as a character. But point being is that Cloud doesn't save Aerith for all the potential that was promised from at the end of the original FF7 remake. Uh, part two effectively just says, well, no, Aerith is still going to die. But as people have noted, the scene is kind of washed over and I noticed it as well. Aerith doesn't get a grandiose scene. We don't get her being lower, her body lower into the water. It's not even necessarily clear that Aerith is dead because at certain points in the final boss fight, Aerith comes back. And how do we read that? How do we process that? Part of me thinks that it, it could be Aerith from another reality or another world, since that is something that is, Sephiroth is trying to achieve now. The coming together, the reunion of not only Genova and Genova cells, but of multiple worlds all coming together at the same time, potentially to defeat all of his foes at once. That's kind of interesting. But the other idea is that Aerith could just be potentially a ghost, literally just a spirit there to, in Cloud's mind, to encourage him if we are to take into account Cloud's deteriorating mental state. It could also be something else entirely that isn't necessarily clear yet, but may be made clear in the third part. Aerith could come back. Because when you break it down, everything that Rebirth is about, Rebirth is not carrying the same theme as Final Fantasy VII. Or at least it's not Final Fantasy VII Remake's projects in main theme. If we were to think about anything here that is Rebirth and Remake kind of general overall theme at this point, it seems to be trauma. And not only trauma, but recovering from trauma and moving past trauma. There's a scene that, despite what people think of the ending of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, a lot of people seem to agree that the scene in the Temple of the Ancients, where each of the characters split up and are encountered with their past trauma, Aerith being unable to save her mother as a child, Barrett losing his wife, Red Thirteen being experimented on, 
Yuffie having someone that she really cared about being absolutely murdered and potentially being tortured. It's really unbelievably heavy stuff to deal with. And it's incredibly poignant. It is really, really, really well done. I could go into a ton about how the characters have been massively improved on from the original FF7, which is saying something because the original FF7 characters are so memorable, distinct, and fantastic. Uh, rebirth seems to be essentially about trauma, and the trauma of Aerith dying is not necessarily lost because it's just essentially focused on in the same way. In the same and to that point, also in the same way that Remake glosses over the idea of Sephiroth being any kind of a surprise to a, the player, so does Aerith's death be glossed over essentially by Rebirth as a game as being not necessarily that important of an event because originally it was a shocking thing back in the OG FF7 and you can't do that anymore except for the sake of nostalgia and being like well damn she died again and there was nothing we could do it's these are my ideas at the very least, and whether or not I'm right or wrong after the third part comes out, something that I need to reconcile with. I haven't even necessarily reconciled with my emotions about Rebirth's ending and what it means yet, because I don't think I have had enough time yet. One of the th major things to me that is apparent, though, is that the trauma of Aerith's death even though it's just part of a story, even though it's literally just a piece of media, it's stuck with and is a major, or at least a trauma that a lot of gamers are kind of still carrying to this day, where Eris' death has been brought up a lot since the remake project has been announced. And yeah... It's kind of interesting what the development team is actually saying, and I would love to read more interviews and just talk with the, you know, creative producers and everything about this game and really get more details. But it does feel like that to me, at least my interpretation right now. Going back to that theme again. This theme brings up a ton of emotion, not only to me, but a ton of other people. And it is a trauma. It's not a real world trauma. And but it is something that is stuck with a lot of gamers. I wonder if that is more of the point of FS7 Rebirth, of moving past trauma, because it certainly is a very big moment in FF7 Rebirth that it has struck a chord with a lot of gamers. So anyway, that is my thoughts on it. Whether you agree or disagree, of course, you are entitled to your own opinions and beliefs about what we have witnessed here. I don't think any of us will really have a really good frame on, until this entire project is finished. And we still have a major chunk to get through before the end. And potentially, who knows, maybe some Vincent DLC if we're really lucky on Dirge of Cerberus. Anyway, I'm still all in on this project, and I absolutely love FF7. It was always going to be a mountain of a thing for me to get over, because even though at the end of all of this, I look at FF7 Rebirth as one of my favorite games of all time. And one thing I asked myself before I finished the game, given the knowledge that I knew that Eret's death was essentially where the game was going to end on, will I successfully be able to play Seven Rebirth a ton and enjoy it as much as I've enjoyed Remake Knowing that constantly, every time that I want to play this game, I have to go through the end of it. And through that sad moment again of not being able to save 
a character that I really care about. Something that I don't like. It's hard enough not saving someone in the real world that you care about. But a character? That can be painful because it is media and it feels like we should have more agency about it. So yeah, I don't know if FF7 Rebirth would be considered still one of my favorite games just because of that. And I guess to end this video, I don't have a good answer. But I think that some people are shortchanging Rebirth and what its message and the ideas and themes that it is really trying to explore. It's not the original Final Fantasy VII. Get over it. It can never be that wonderful first experience of a game that made so many of our childhood and growing up special. But it doesn't have to be. Remake can grow and change, or the remake project can grow and change and become in something much bigger and better than the original ever was. And no matter how challenging that may seem, it is really possible if you are open to it, you know, potentially being. But hey, criticism could always be uh, done in every piece of media, just because. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. And of course, if you do have a differing opinion, please share it in the comments, but please be respectful about it. Uh, yeah, that's all. Thanks so much.